how are you? Thank you for being here. Um, why is this so, one second. It's a little, it's a little, uh, oh my God, my lens is so dirty. Can you guys see me okay? Um, this lighting is a little funky. Thank you so much for joining me here uh, this evening. I'm so sorry that I missed the live stream on Saturday because this is technically Saturday, is it, Tina? <laughs> um, and I, I was sick and I had like this crazy headache um for two and a half days and i really didn't feel well so i'm so sorry for missing saturday with you guys but i am here <laughs> um and anyway uh today i did a recording session for a league of legends i recorded um cello electric cello and air who uh, i can't say exactly you know when the music will come out or what exactly or what it is specifically but i will be able to tell you by the end of this week so very quick turnaround um so today, uh, I thought that maybe I would do something a little bit different, uh, something that I think applies uh, to not only musicians and self-employed musicians uh, like myself, um, but just people and life in general. And it is a subject that I'm very passionate about. Um, it's just like one of my favorite hobbies. Uh, and it is, how do I put this? Uh, well, to be very straightforward, it is money. Um, so it's not not so much, you know, being for me being the idea of being wealthy or having money. It's not about material things. It's not about you know buying material things or whatnot. But it's more about just having freedom. You know, freedom to do what we love. Um, freedom to not be stressed out all the time. Freedom to have hopefully have a nest egg um, in case of emergencies. In case you want to go on a vacation. In case you do want to treat yourself um, to a little something occasionally. So the question is. How do we get there? How do we get to that point um, where we're not living paycheck to paycheck, gig to gig, constantly worried um, about money? Because that's that's also where I came from. I, I uh, started with literally nothing from zero. Um, so I thought I would take tonight um, to talk to you guys about this. And I have like so many thoughts on it. That I've spent the last hour like typing out, and I don't know if you can see these, but typing out 10 pages of stuff that I wanted to talk about. So I'm gonna try to keep it concise and organized and uh, talk about some general concepts um, in addition to my own personal story of you know how I managed to go from being about $100,000 in debt, yes, $100,000, uh, to being where I am now, uh, which is you know definitely not in debt. Uh, and I've been able to save and invest. And so I wanted to talk to you guys about that, about the process, because it is possible um, with any income. It's not, I mean, of course, you know, the more you make, it's a good thing, but it's not about what you make, it's about what you save and what you do with that. Um, and then uh, I'm gonna also talk about like the different websites that I use, the different tools, um, how I do my own bookkeeping, because I do that, uh, how I track all of my income and expenses, uh, daily budgeting, grocery budgeting, just, you know, stuff like that. Um, so hopefully it interests some of you. Uh, if not, I hope you have a lovely evening. <laughs> okay. So let's start. Hey guys, hi Brenda. All right, is this backwards? Oh no, it is backwards. Oh, okay, I'm just gonna have to read it to you. So if you wanna take notes, feel free. <clears throat> okay. Okay, so the number one general concept <laughs> is that small, consistent choices. So small, consistent behaviors uh, times consistency. It's kind of the same thing. So consistent, small behaviors uh, over time equals results. So it's the same thing with practicing. So um, do I feel like do I feel like waking up every morning and practicing six, eight hours a day if I have the time? No, of course not. I want to like, you know, lay in bed and watch TV. I want to go, I don't know, go hiking or eat chocolate. Um, and it's something that I force myself to do. It is you, it, sometimes you just have to force yourself to do stuff. And I feel like with uh, with savings and with money, it is kind of the same thing. So it's short term pain for long term gain, right? Okay, so the three rules. Number one, always try if you can. I understand again that everybody has different circumstances, right? And I'll explain mine as well. So number one is make more than you spend. Um, I think uh, generally, you know, it, it's kind of a problem, um, especially in our society, and by our society, I mean maybe Western society, where we do have a little bit of a thing where we feel like 
oh, I want to impress other people, or we follow celebrities or people, and, and we see what they have, um, and we want to emulate it, we want to copy it. And then sometimes, uh, which is not really an issue because it's great to admire people, but if it's to our own detriment, if you're buying things that you can't afford and you're borrowing money or you're putting money on credit cards and then you're, char you're, you're you know, paying the credit card off little by little and there's interest and so it just gets to be more and more and more and then before you know it, you're like stuck under a lot of debt. So um, that is a very bad idea, obviously. Um, so one, always make more money than you spend, right? Number two, make sure you save money and you invest it. And for, I know for a lot of us, like we don't have, uh, you know, we're not taught investment strategies in, in normal school, in school. Um, and it's not, I went to USC for cello performance and nobody ever taught me about budgeting uh, or investing or whatnot. So it's something that we really have to take upon ourselves if we're not taught that by our parents or by teachers or by our friends. We really have to take it upon ourselves to do the research um, and to force ourselves to learn about that because it's for the good of our future. Um, and then three, develop these simple daily habits. Okay, so um, let me maybe just start with like my, my general story in a very concise way. Uh, in a concise way. So I came here to LA in 2004 uh, to study at USC uh, for cello performance and I did have a scholarship, thank God, I had a full scholarship to study music. Now the scholarship covers the tuition because going to USC I think it was like $50,000 a year which is very expensive um, and so I had a combination of a uh, scholarship for cello performance and also need, uh, need based um, because of the income amount of my parents, they're both music teachers, uh, so basically I had the maximum amount that I could get from the government. Um, I also had some loans, Sally Mae loans that I took out, uh, because even though the tuition was covered, it didn't cover books, you know, it didn't cover obviously musical instrument supplies, food, living, you know, all these things cost money. Um, so when I came to LA, I had no cello, I had no instrument of my own, um, I had no money, obviously I had no job because I was a student. Um, so you know, as I was in school, um, I had a cello that was on loan to me, so it was a borrowed instrument from the Cole Brown Foundation. Uh, so I was studying and then I was doing some, you know, I was trying to figure out ways to make money and so I was doing recording sessions uh, on campus. We have a great, we had a great uh, music scoring program, so once in a while I would do sessions. I think sometimes I paid, you know, like $20 an hour, $15, $20 for a session. I would do those um, for a very long time. The main source of my income was from Craigslist. Yes, Craigslist. So I used to post ads like two or three times a day. I was very methodical about this, um, saying, cellist available for hire. We'll play any style of music. I'll do anything, anything cello related. I am there for you. Um, so I had a, you know, I've played in every club on the Sunset Strip. I played weddings, I played funerals, I played bar mitzvahs, uh, I played engagement parties, all kinds of stuff uh, to make you know, to make money. Um, and uh, my most memorable, uh, I've talked about this a couple times, but my most memorable gig or performance, some, sometimes people ask me like, what is your most memorable performance? And honestly, my most memorable performance, aside from you know, all the amazing things I'm very grateful to, to have been able to do, but to be completely honest, my most memorable, I was 19, my second year uh, in college here in LA, uh, I was broke. And I had to add up on Craigslist, you know, the usual. And I got this email from a guy and he offered to pay me $50, which at the time was like an astronomical amount of money, 50, uh, 50, five zero. I was like, what, $50? Yeah, okay, so he told me, he's like, I live out in Simi Valley, which it's like pretty far, it's like a north of LA a little bit, uh, pretty far from downtown LA where I was living. He said, you know, I live in Simi Valley and I wanted to propose to my girlfriend. And so I will pay you $50 if you come to our condo, because they live together already, but I need you to hide in the closet. So there was a, a it was like a kitchen and living room kind of combined area, like, like where I live now in this condo. Um, and so there was a, a closet. And so he wanted me to go there before she got home from work, hide in the closet with my cello and then wait for her to come home, go upstairs, because she always would take a shower first thing when she came home. And then when she got upstairs, I would like run out of the closet, you know, get situated in the living room and start playing the Bach prelude, everyone's favorite cello song. Um, <laughs> so I drove all the way up there. 
and then uh, I got there he seemed you know he seemed nice I guess I just had no fear I didn't think about like oh this is kind of a weird situation and obviously I'm still alive so don't worry nothing happened but um looking back I'm like wow I was just really I guess I was just I was desperate you know um so I went there I went into the closet and then I was waiting and waiting and waiting and she was late and so I ended up in the closet for like half an hour waiting for her to get home right uh, and then finally, and I, I was in there, I remember I started sweating because it was really hot, it was full of like coats and stuff, and I had the cello out because I wanted to be able to just run out, so I was holding the cello, I was there with the case, I was like, like this for half an hour, right? Um, and then finally she gets home, she goes upstairs, I come in and sit, I start playing after she gets out of the shower, uh, and in the end she said hello, so it turned into like a pretty long situation, you know, it took me almost a couple hours to get up there, a couple hours to get back, um, and I was there for at least an hour, but hey, I made $50, so what is that, five hours uh, plus gas? Um, <laughs> so yeah, I had my fair share of uh, interesting experiences. Um, I had a really hard time finding cello students when I was in school because I, I thought like, oh, maybe I should teach, um, try to teach students and it was hard to find them. You know, I listened on Craigslist and so I joined this website. I was like Googling every day trying to find ways to like make money, you know, um, instead of constantly, you know, charging credit cards and borrowing. But um, so I also was on this website. Um, it's like a teacher service and I was offering also piano lessons, but it was really like in the end it was crazy because the amount that they charged wasn't very much it was maybe $35 an hour um, but the like the company would take the majority cut it was like a 60% that they would take and then so for me after all the gas and driving back and forth it came out to like less than minimum wage you know per hour so you know it was pretty intense but anyway that's where I started um, and it really wasn't was it that long ago? Oh, I forget how old I am now. I'm 32. <laughs> so yeah, okay, it's been it's been over a decade. So it's been a long, you know, decade. Uh, so that's where I started. And then actually what happened was that I started performing, I started doing some more classical concerts. So by the time I was in my third year of college, I was missing so much class, uh, not because I was just, you know, randomly running around, but I was trying to, I was trying to make money, you know? Um, and so I ended up dropping out because it was either that I, continue try, trying to like invest in my career or I finish school and then not work and then just I guess accrue more debt which is actually not I mean it's it's not a bad thing to do that but it was only my personal choice to do that so uh, why am I telling you this this is just kind of the backstory um, so you know you know where I came from um, okay all right so here we go <laughs> All right, so the, the first thing, the first point that I have here on this piece of paper, which you guys can't see, and even if you could see it, it's backwards on the screen, so that's not of any use. All right, so one of my favorite concepts is parsimony and frugality, and because I was making so little, it is really hard to say when you make very, very little money, right? Um, so after I left college, um, I tried to find the least expensive places that I could live. So I remember uh, first I moved to Sun Valley, uh, and I rented a room uh, in a very nice girl's uh, home. She was a 911 dispatcher. Uh, and the neighborhood was uh, eh, not great, you know, but of course that's where you're gonna find very inexpensive places to live. And I remember I paid $600 a month, including utilities. Uh, and I even had my own parking spot, so that was, that was pretty baller. Um, so I lived there. And then still, 600 a month was still too much because I still wasn't making enough. Um, and so I found this garage. I lived in a garage, there was no, no heat no air conditioning, and it wasn't even the entire garage, it was behind a house, it was like half the garage with this kind of plastic wall partitioning. Um, they did add a bathroom, so I had I had a toilet and a shower um, <laughs> in like a closet that was like maybe three feet wide, uh, this tiny, tiny little place, uh, and I didn't have money to buy a bed, so I bought, I remember I bought this futon, and I thought it was so awesome. It was like fake micro microfiber, um, also from Craigslist, and it was one of those click clack futons, which I think even knew it was only $200 or something. I got it for $50 off of Craigslist. And so I slept on my couch, uh, on my futon, um, and then I, after I left school, I didn't, I didn't think of this part. So my acoustic cello, my classical cello, was on loan to me from the Colburn, Colburn Foundation. And because I left school, I could no longer keep the instrument because it's only for kids that are currently uh, enrolled in college. So I suddenly found myself celloless, which is kind of a problem. Um, and this, I'm kind of skipping ahead, this has to do with, uh, you know, with debts and 
but basically I purchased this cello um, using multiple, I maxed out all my credit cards that I had at the time, uh, and I took out a loan from a bank, but I'm gonna go back to that because I'm skipping ahead. All right, I'm gonna try to stay organized right now. Okay, so the first concept <laughs> is that you want to try to be as frugal as possible. Um, I know it's not fun in the short term, but if you have certain long-term goals, like for me, um, because I struggled so much, I told myself, like it was always been a goal, again, not because it's materialism, it was more of just wanting security, wanting to not have to depend on anybody else, you know? Um, I remember when I used to uh, only buy food from either the dollar store, which actually has some cool stuff, uh, and from like the clearing sections of supermarkets or stuff that were like marked down, it's like manager special, marked down because it's like expiring today or tomorrow. Um, and I, I only purchased food there. I never ate out, I never ordered. Um, and I was really, really careful because I, for me, the end goal was I want to be a self-made millionaire. I want to be financially independent. I want to be able to uh, fund my own music, fund my own projects, and really be able to take care of myself. So for me, that was um, that was my goal. You know, to have the end goal. I don't know what your goals might be. Um, you know, I think just having a lot in savings and not knowing that you know if something happens and. Uh, you can't work for a month or hey, you want to take some time off and go on a vacation or you want to help you know a family member or a friend to be able to do that um, and to have uh, have the money available um, you, you know every, everything has a sacrifice right uh, if I want to be able to learn a piece of music I, I'm going to practice eight to ten hours a day because that's what it takes to um, really get it into your fingers so it's very it's, it's actually literally the same as music right um, okay so, uh, let's see, I told you guys about how little I paid for the rooms. Um, yeah, I, oh my gosh, you, you guys, literally until I think the year 2000, oh, here's something else. So, growing up, um, I, I remember the very first time I bought an item of clothing that wasn't used. And I was 19 years old, so it wasn't until I was in college. And I'd been working, I was doing these gigs on Craigslist and teaching. And it was my very first time uh, at the, um, what was it called? The uh, Beverly, it's like in West Hollywood, Beverly Center. I don't go shopping very often. Beverly Center. So I took the bus from USC downtown to the Beverly Center because I didn't have a car. Um, and it's not that far. If you drive, it's like maybe 20, 25 minutes, depending on traffic. It took me an hour and a half to get there because the bus stops like every block. So yeah, okay, so I got there. And I saved up, saved up some money because before everything uh, that I wore came from garage sales or yard sales or the swap meet. Uh, and I remember I went to our money exchange. Uh, I walked past there and it had a big sign that said, oh, there's like a clearance sale. Clearance sale, and for me at the time, like Armani, I mean, fa fancy brands, right? It was really um, something that I had just never. Uh, it's it's like way way out of my my comfort zone or range. And I saw this sweater, and I really liked it, and it was on sale, but it was on sale for forty dollars, which I don't know. Maybe I mean it is a lot of money, um, but at the time that was ridiculous. You know, I was used to buying stuff for like a dollar for a shirt. Um, so I stood in the store for an, an hour, like painfully, you know, trying to analyze, should I really do this? Should I do this? Oh my God, should I do this? I tried it on, took it off like two or three times back and forth. And finally, after an hour, I did purchase it. Um, so yeah, I don't know why I was sh I'm sharing that, but that's a random thing. So, uh, you know, I guess on occasion I did splurge a tiny little bit. Um, okay, uh, let's see. All right. So I'm done with talking about my own personal story. I'm gonna talk about some tips that I think will uh, help um, everybody. So for me, I was able to start turning things around, A, because I was um, I was saving almost everything that I made. So I started automating my savings, which is the first thing. Um, so like for every dollar I made, if I could, I would try to allocate at least 75% of it. So if I made a dollar 75 cents, I would automatically put into a separate account and not touch that. So I'm like, I'm saving that, I'm just gonna live off of 25% of what I make. If it's barely enough, if I'm, I'm not gonna eat tonight, I'm not gonna eat. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna save it and it'll be a diet. Um, so I try to do that as much as I could. So I, I put aside 75% of what I made. Um, I lived in the cheapest places possible, as, as you guys know. Um, let's see, okay, so a good way to automate your savings is to set up auto transfers from your bank account. So. If you guys uh, have a checking account and a savings account, it's actually very easy to set like a weekly or a monthly um, transfer. 
know, when I started, uh, I, I started with a very small amount. I started with $5 a month, which is nothing. I think everybody can afford that, right? $5 a month, and it kind of just gets you used to the process of putting money aside in a separate account that's specifically allocated for your future. Okay, so that's a, I think for um, at the very minimum everybody should be able to do that. Uh, and then let's see. Oh, I have something written here where it says extreme savings depositing change. I took it. A, I took it pretty extreme uh, when I was in college. Uh, I opened my bank account with Bank of America, which I still have, um, and I I was so crazy about saving that sometimes I would find change on the floor, like a quarter or a few pennies, and I would literally pick it up and go deposit it in the bank the same day, like like coins, but because I was just so like psychotic really about, about saving. So I don't know if you have to take it to that extreme, but maybe put, you know, put change aside into a, a little piggy bank uh, and then just try to automate your savings. Okay, so now with savings, there are some uh, great online savings accounts. Um, I have three that have uh, APR, so that means they pay you interest. If you have uh, a bank account with one of the major banks like Wells Fargo, Bank of America, Chase, and all the you know um, the popular ones here in the U.S., for the most part, they barely pay um, any interest at all. It's like a fraction, a fraction of a percent. Um, and so, what I would recommend is that even if it's a little bit, because none of these have any minimums, which means that you can. If you have $5 saved, you can still transfer into these uh, accounts. And the two of them that I would recommend, one is called CIT, so CIT Bank. And then there's also a new online bank uh, that was just opened that I just found out about. Uh, and I shifted um, like 30% of my savings over there. It's the Marcus, uh, it's called Marcus by Goldman Sachs, right? So CIT Bank pays a 1.55% return. There's no minimum, there's no fees, so literally they will pay you 1.55% interest, which doesn't sound like much, but honestly with the rate of inflation, and if you just put you know, your money in a normal savings account with one of the major banks, uh, one of the uh, physical banks that are probably close to you, you're not getting paid anything for keeping the money there. So. It's better than nothing, right? Uh, and then Marcus by Goldman Sachs pays a 1.5% APR. So uh, I definitely would recommend that you guys check out that. Uh, you can also just Google uh, savings um, savings accounts, online interest yielding. So these are, again, free, completely free, there's no fees, free savings accounts that actually pay you money to keep, uh, keep your money in the bank. Um, and yes, it's legal, yes, it's FDIC insured. Uh, so I would definitely recommend that because it doesn't cost you anything. Um, and I think the big concept is learning how to make money using your money. So instead of spending your money, your hard earned money that you work so hard hour by hour for, how do you save that? and then use that money that you already made to actually make you more so that you start having residual income so you don't have to work hour by hour. So you could literally sit here and do nothing and have money coming in from uh, residual, from interest, you know, from bank accounts, from investments, uh, from royalties, from stuff like that. Okay. All right, but don't worry. Um, I'm, I'm aware that maybe a lot of you don't know what that means. So I'm going to go over all these concepts. I've only gone through two pages. There's eight more. So sorry. Um, <laughs> okay, next track income and spending. Okay, so I found that it is very, very hard, just like when you're trying to diet, if you don't write down every single thing that you eat and keep track of your calories, the same thing with money. It's very easy to, you know, you you walk by Starbucks, oh, I'm just gonna get a drink, five, six dollars, you know, or if you get a scone. Oh, you know, I didn't pack lunch today, I'm just gonna order something to the office, another 15, 20 dollars. Oh, okay, so it's, it's fine, of course, to spend money, but if you don't track everything and then you compare it and budget it against what income you're actually making, how much you're saving, it's very easy to lose control and just not be aware of it, right? So I think um, being conscious about everything in life uh, is really important. So what I do, I use Google Spreadsheets. Again, again it's totally free. Everything I'm going to uh, recommend to you guys is free because I like free, um, or they pay you to do it, right? Okay, so uh, if you want to use Excel, or Google Spreadsheets, which I prefer because it's all stored online. You can access it from any location, from any computer, from your phone, there's free apps. And I actually do log every penny that I spend or that I make. And I have it allocated into like different columns. Um, so I have it, uh, like for example, my expenses. So I have a column for food. I have a column for specifically cello expenses, publicity expenses, uh, clothing, 
makeup, like stage makeup, but I have it separated into like daily clothing or like stage or music video related clothing, video production costs, photo production costs. So everything is uh, assistance, you know, when I hire other people to help me with things. Um, I'm trying to think like what else do I have uh, oh insurance utilities mortgage so every single item is completely uh, tracked out across horizontally and then vertically uh, by month so it's by date and then at the end of each month I'll add it all up and if, if it's in Google spreadsheets you just highlight uh, the cells and they it automatically adds it up for you so you see exactly how much you spent and it's actually you know sometimes it's pretty shocking like I, I checked uh, yesterday Okay, to be honest, I checked every single day, which is a little excessive, um, but I checked yesterday, and so far, with my income and my expenses for this month, uh, I know it's not the end of the month yet, January, what is it today, the 20th, 21st, something like that, um, and I've saved 40% uh, of my income, so because I bought a new condo, you know, with the mortgage, with the utilities, with the homeowners association, um, I paid off my car, uh, actually, which is great, uh, so, you know, it's, it's a really good thing to just carefully track all of your income and your expenses um, and there's also an app that I would recommend that I use it's called a uh, daily budget and it's like a picture of like a little pig a piggy bank it's free it's a really simple easy to use app um, you can use it in a variety of different ways uh, if you have a job that has like a regular paycheck like for me because I'm a musician, it really it depends. Like every week, every month, every day is different. You know, we don't know what's gonna happen. But um, if you have a regular income with like a normal salary, you can put in your salary and then put in all of your normal expenses, your cell phone bill, Netflix, you know, stuff like that. Um, and then it'll break it down. It'll just automatically calculate for you and show you how much it's costing you to just live literally just like every day that you're awake uh how much money is actually going out not to freak you out but you know maybe sometimes really like, oh i kind of don't want to know but it's a good thing to know um so if you see holy moly just to exist uh with my rent my car payment my whatever so school loans credit card uh it's costing me 82 dollars a day just to live without spending anything extra so to see that um, and then you have the option, it lets you, like what I use it for is just tracking expenses to kind of just remind myself. So anytime I spend anything, even putting $2 into a parking meter, I just put it in real quick. It takes five seconds, you know, $2 parking and I put it there and you like look at it occasionally and you just see, you're, you're aware of how much it's costing you. And I think that helps like control yourself, right? Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, having to do with income and spending, if you can try to eliminate any unneeded subscriptions. Um, I don't have cable TV. I only have a Netflix subscription, $8 a month. That's not too bad. And also Amazon, uh, as you guys know, I love Amazon. Uh, and I have the Amazon Prime account. So that comes with the Amazon subscription for all their TV shows and whatnot. Okay. Um, okay. So let's see. I have a few points here. From one of my favorite books, uh, one of my favorite books is *The Millionaire Next Door*. Three very interesting um, facts that I thought maybe you guys would find interesting. The typical American millionaire never spent more than three hundred ninety-nine dollars on a suit for himself. Again, I'm not sure, you know, if you guys are suit wearing people, but I think sometimes when we see on social media, on Instagram, uh, on on YouTube and whatnot, and following the people that we follow, and you see things that seem like they're really expensive or fancy, and it makes you kind of want to be able to buy those things, um, and we might get like the wrong idea of what is, because you know it's really really easy to look like maybe give out like the image that you're a baller or that you have money just simply by buying expensive things or expensive clothes uh, on a credit card. Um, but when in actuality, you actually have no money because you're in debt and because you're actually in the negative. And so this is about actually building real wealth, right? Um, so the typical American millionaire never spends more than $400 on a suit, right? If you're a businessman. Um, over 95% of millionaires have 20% of their income entirely in stocks, so residual income. Uh, and then 85% were self-made and didn't work a typical nine to five job. Uh, and then random fact, uh, since we're talking about clothes and stuff. So this dress uh, that I'm wearing today, I got in the mail yesterday and technically it was free. Why was it free? Well, uh, if uh, on Amazon, $25.99, so $26 uh, for this dress, free shipping. And it was free because I have a Amazon credit card, which gives you 5% 
uh, cash back, 5%, that's a lot. No fees, completely free. 5% cash back on other Amazon purchases. And so I accrued enough points from other purchases that I needed to make, like for you know music equipment and stuff I actually use in my business. And then when I do get these like rewards points, then I use it to buy some clothes and stuff. So this was uh, free. Okay, um, all right, let's see. Uh, I next I want to talk about uh, using credit right credit card for uh, for liabilities um, never use credit cards if you can for liabilities right so for me um, when I mentioned earlier that I had about you know a hundred I think it was about a hundred thousand dollars in debt uh, and I'll explain to you what it was from it, it wasn't I mean to be honest it wasn't from random purchases of clothes or like cars or stuff like that um, it was let's see what did I buy oh cellos my bows uh, like computer music related gear uh, my microphone that I still use here in my home studio it's the only microphone I've ever owned I bought it at Guitar Center uh, 10 years ago and it was on sale for $350 and I still use the same mic and I know I know uh, you know engineers or uh, people who are really into gear like oh my god how you know that's that's not a good enough microphone I use the Rode NT1000 you should have a more expensive microphone and I think eventually one day I'll upgrade but I've recorded on so many um, you know a-level movies and album projects and TV shows and my own albums you know all of the solo cello stuff that I um, I recorded myself uh, that I engineered in my home studio for my last album on Sony which is called Game On um, I did it all using this microphone so Hey, it works for me. Right, okay, so I try to be very careful with um, with not taking on too much credit card debt, but I somehow ended up with $100,000 in debt, and how did this happen? Well, I will tell you. So it started, my first big purchase that I made, that I documented, that I still have written down, May 1st, 2007, uh, I purchased my first cello bow uh, for $3,000, right? I bought, uh, I charged on a credit card my cello that I still use, Cello Guo, um, for $65,000, so that's a lot. Um, and then for, like I mentioned before, the living expenses that I had while I was in college, um, books and stuff like that, so it added up to about that much in debt. So um, that is why I was living in a garage, that is why I was trying to live on as little as possible to pay all of that off. Um, and it really, you know, I was like kind of barely making it by until uh, I joined the Cirque du Soleil in 2011. So from 2011 to 2013, I ran away with the circus. Um, and this, that was an amazing opportunity for me to turn things around. Um, so when I was with the circus, I sold all of my belongings except for my instruments uh, and my car at the time, which was paid off. Uh, I bought a pre-owned Chrysler 300 um, and I, I bought it in cash. Uh, and then, so the only, that, that was the only thing that I had. So I didn't have any rent to pay. Um, and for two years, I lived off of $20 a week. And I was using that app that I mentioned to you guys earlier, the daily budget app to make sure. And I know that it's not a realistic thing for, you know, probably for most people. It's an extreme example because I was on tour because living expenses were covered. Um, food, I was eating catering, I was taking things from catering, not excessive amounts, but I was taking things from catering, from um, craft services, and just really trying to save all of my income. So um, I was actually able to pay off all of my debt in the first year, so all of my school loans, um, my instruments, my credit cards, I paid everything off in the first year that I was in the Cirque. Um, and then after that, I started taking courses online. I took a free investing course from TD Ameritrade to learn about stocks, to learn about different types of investments. Um, and so that's when I started investing. So that was in uh, 2012. Uh, and so these are some of the things that, um, that I did. And so I'll just show you exactly what types of investments uh, that I do and how it's worked out for me so far. Okay. Uh, lending Club was one of the first things that I started doing. So Lending Club is peer-to-peer -peer lending, and it's kind of like you acting as a credit card company, right? Um, so as you guys know, credit cards have pretty high uh, interest rates, so 15 to 23%, I think some of them, um, and so that's a lot. So Lending Club is where you are basically lending money to other people through this website. Um, but at lower interest rates. So, uh, and it it's kind of divided out here. I, mean, I don't know if you guys can see it, but 
these are, this is like the allocation of all of the loans that I have out to people. Um, I have, I think I'm, I'm lending, currently I'm lending um, $25 increments out to people and I have several thousand loans out to different people and this has been going on since uh, 2012. And so you loan out $25 increments with different interest rates. So if they have A level credit, for example, so right now this is what's happening. So if, the, if you have a, a credit rating level, the interest rate that um, is charged to the borrower is 8%, which is compared to a normal credit card, that's great. Um, and 8% is a great return on an investment. Um, so I have mostly, I lend money mostly to D, people with D level credit, and it's a little bit more uh, more of a risk, but the return is 13%. And so over the last six years, I've averaged a 6.3% return, which is, you know, not amazing, but it's, I, to me, I feel like it's been a very, very steady um, source of income. And also it is like very liquid uh, because all these different people are paying or repaying their debts uh, like every day, it's all spread out. It's not one big chunk, you know, because they all uh, were lent this money on different days. So every day I have a little bit of residual income uh, coming back from interest and from loan repayments through Lending Club. Okay, uh, next one. Uh, I use Wealthfront for a lot of my uh, stocks. So this is the allocation of the stocks that I have invested in. 35% uh, is in US stocks. Uh, about 18% in foreign stocks, emerging markets, 15% um, natural resources, municipal bonds. If you guys go to wealthfront.com, uh, you can start trying to invest in, um, like I think they have some folders that are already allocated, portfolios that are already like put together for you. So you can look through that and if you have a little bit, little bit of money put aside from the stuff that you've saved, you can start um, investing. And even, again, it's like even if it's a little, little bit, because when I started, it was I started investing, you know, $50, $100, and it just slowly, slowly adds up. So you don't have to feel like you need to save a ton of money to be able to do it. You can really start, and it's really about compounding interest. So the more, um, the more that it slowly adds up, up, and then the interest that you receive, so the money that you make, um, if you can, if you're able to, try to actually put that back into the investment so it just kind of like grows and snowballs from there, right? Um, okay, uh, let's see, I have some other stocks through Ally Investments, Motif Investments, there's just a lot of different brokerages that, um, but there's tons of them that you guys can look up online. Um, and then the other major, I guess, uh, investments that I've kind of uh, delved into are corporate real estate investments. So they're called uh, real, real Estate Investment Trusts, and the two that I've invested in are Fundrise, it's Fundrise, uh, so it's, it pays about 6 to 8% dividends, uh, and then Realty Mobile, which is about 8% dividends, so you're kind of buying very, very small shares of corporate real estate, so it might be apartment buildings, it might be... Um, uh, buildings that businesses rent. Uh, so yeah, those are the things that I've invested in. Um, I don't know, I feel like I've just kind of been rambling. I'm not sure if this is of any interest to you guys, but um, I just wanted to share. And then also, one more thing, uh, this is my 2017 folder. So I keep these uh, folders for each year <laughs> of my adult existence. And this is from uh, last year. So what I do at the beginning of every year, I uh, write out the months. So for my income of each month, uh, I just keep the uh, I keep the pay stubs or the checks, and I file them here. And then all of my receipts for expenses, they're divided up, like I mentioned before in the spreadsheets. They're divided up into what it was for. So I have food, uh, food, office expenses travel expenses, stage makeup, stage wear, medical expenses, donations. Um, so I just have everything uh, in this accordion folder. Uh, and I keep, uh, it's actually longer than you need, but I, I keep uh, 10 years of records of everything uh, I've spent or made in these folders. Um, so yeah. I hope that something something in this was helpful. Uh, Emmanuel says, and holidays. Uh, yes, okay. So again, I'm not I, I can be very extreme, and I feel like in order to get extreme results, you have to be willing to uh, do extreme things, right? So uh, as far as holidays, I would not recommend putting yourself into a lot of credit card debt 
um, to buy things for people. Uh, this is again just my personal my personal opinion. I feel uh, like there's a lot of things that you can do that we can do for our loved ones, for our families, for our friends that don't have to cost very much. Um, and if you really do want to give them some like a physical item, there's there's plenty of stuff that you know doesn't have to cost a lot of money um, that they'll like or be useful to them. Um, you can, you know, I used to do these things where you, know, you give people like coupon booklets or give them, you know, I'll help you clean your house or I'll give you a cello lesson, but maybe you don't play the cello, but you, you get the general idea. Um, so I don't know if that's exactly, hey guys, hi Jose. Um, I'm not sure if that's exactly what you meant, um, but I, as far as holidays, yes. So in uh, taking vacations, there's lots of different ways to um, take little vacations where you don't have to spend so much money. Um, for me personally, I am a bit of an extremist. Um, so during the time when I was working really, really hard to pay off all of my debt, to pay off my instruments, um, and to be able to save enough to start investing, I didn't take any vacations. Uh, I worked seven days a week. Uh, I worked from the moment I woke up uh, to the time I went to bed. Usually I would go to bed around four or five in the morning. I was like a vampire. Um, and so I did not take any vacations um, until I was out of debt, uh, until I had some savings. Um, so, but I'm not saying you guys have to do that. That's just from my experience because for me, it was really, really important to get myself out of the hole into a place where, you know, we're now you know, I, I continue to make as much as I can. Um, I have a lot of like investments and different things and side businesses and like um, other things happening. Um, and I'm still, I still am actually very careful. So as I mentioned earlier this month, I've saved about 40%, which is a little bit disappointing because I used to save more, but I've saved 40% of the, the income so far from this month. Um, I try to aim usually for at least 50%, 50 to 60%. Um, so just to, uh, and again, what I do is I get a paycheck um, and then I put half of it or more than half of it immediately. I transfer it into a different account So I, in an account um, that will take me about two or three days to access the money uh, Even if I wanted to so you just pretend that it's not there and then you leave it there or or I put it into investments or whatnot um, So because if you do that immediately, then you won't be tempted to spend it, right? Okay um, Let's see if you guys have any other questions uh, Play places. What about foreign currency? You know, I haven't really gotten too much into um foreign currency I do have I mean I have some euros I have um, Chinese uh, yen I have Korean money I have a little bit of different things but I don't really look um, I don't treat that as an investment um, I did buy cryptocurrency I recently sold all of it I had Litecoin Bitcoin and Ethereum I first bought um, Bitcoin in 2013 so quite a few years ago uh, and I sold it last week because um, I started feeling a little bit nervous about you know there's a huge huge spike when everybody got really into it and then a big drop and you know I really hope I hope that it goes back up I hope I hope that it does great but for me it just became too stressful because I was literally checking Coinbase every 10 minutes I couldn't even concentrate I couldn't practice I couldn't write I just kept checking it and I'm like you know what let me just get rid of it at a profit while I'm still ahead just in case so um, that is my my current situation uh, with cryptocurrency and with foreign uh, foreign currency um, Jay Lopez ha says how about tax-free savings well tax-free oh uh, of course so I did not mention uh, retirement accounts so IRAs uh, for like self-employed people like myself uh, I open an IRA uh, actually shamefully enough I didn't open one until four years ago which I think is a little bit late you know uh, when I was 28 years old so IRA is a um, is a retirement account and you can put up to fifty five hundred dollars per year uh, into it so if you have a traditional IRA which is the kind that I have you the money that you put in so the fifty five hundred dollars that I invest into that for my retirement you know far in the future, hopefully, uh, <laughs> towards my retirement, uh, that is deducted from your taxable income. So you don't get taxed on that. However, when you take the money out, when you're 65 or 70 or whatever it is, whenever you retire, then you get taxed on the income then. So it's really up to you. If you prefer to pay the taxes on it now and then not be taxed, um, uh, for it later then you can do a Roth IRA there's a lot of different kinds of retirement accounts so that technically um, is kind of a tax-free way because you're not paying taxes on that income that you uh, put into the retirement account um, but I mean we all have to pay taxes you know uh, it's just that if we study um, different ways that we can save 
you know, and not be giving more than we should. It's not about not paying taxes, but it's about not giving more than we should of our fair share, right? Um, okay, uh, sorry, I haven't, uh, uh, these comments are scrolling by and I haven't been able to uh, read them. So I am gonna answer a couple more. Let's see. Um, David says, I wanna start investing. What are your best recommendations? Okay, so if you're a brand new investor and uh, you're just kind of getting your feet wet, one of my favorite things that I have just uh, started myself, it's called Acorns, it's an app. Um, they also have a website, but it's an app called Acorns, like the acorns falling from a tree. Um, and what it does is that you can um, you can attach it to your credit cards, your bank accounts, and so for every, every dollar that you spend, so every time you charge for lunch or a cup of coffee, say your coffee is a dollar, I don't know, a dollar sixty, it rounds up to the nearest dollar so the extra 40 cents because it's not a lot of money it's like you almost don't miss it right it's a psychological trick so it automatically takes that 40 cents and it transfers it directly to your acorns account and acorns in the app um, you can set uh, your preference of how um, how much risk you're willing to take so I have mine set on the highest risk um, so which means there's more stocks uh, as opposed to bonds in uh, in the allocation of the portfolio and it's great because there's no again there's no limit you don't have to invest tons of money it's it literally starts with just cents you know so you buy a cup of coffee for a dollar forty automatically 60 cents goes into investments and they have um, of course professional investors that oversee the portfolio and keep rebalancing it um, and that's a very kind of a hands-off way so if you're just starting you're just learning um, and you're not maybe comfortable buying stocks yourself and doing all that yet um, maybe you're in the process of reading about different uh, stocks that you might be interested in or just learning about investments I feel like acorns is a pretty simple and kind of uh, hands-off way of investing um, and you're almost tricking yourself into it because you don't even notice right um, and so for me I have acorns set up uh, set up and attached to all of my accounts so anytime I spend any money um, if I, the remaining amount going up to the next dollar is automatically invested and on top of that I have a hundred dollars a month going to the acorns account just like just a normal transfer so I think from for me I feel like that is probably one of the best ways to start investing um, and then again there's so many free I'm not sure if TD Ameritrade still has a free course I'm pretty sure they do uh, the one that I took to kind of study and to learn about um, the terminology what is a bear market what is a bull market you know what uh, what, like what, what are all these terms mean? what does it mean uh, what does it mean to own a stock in a company so all of these things which would take forever for, for me to explain um, and can be much better explained by other professionals uh, and there's they're all available on these courses for free so I definitely think you guys should check that out if you have interest yep um, let's see oh cute outfit thank you thank you thank you uh what about buying real estate outright uh well um i you know this place that i'm in right now the condo is my first um i guess personal piece of real estate that i've purchased uh and for me that was like a big uh goal for myself a personal goal just to buy a home um and again you know there's a lot of like calculators available online where you can, depending on where you live, depending on what your expenses are, depending on the rental market, sometimes it's actually cheaper and easier in your lifestyle to rent. Um, sometimes it does make more sense to buy. So, so I don't think one thing is necessarily better than the other, but it really depends, again, on your lifestyle, um, obviously how much cash you have saved. Uh, but for me, I really, really, really wanted to uh, buy a home. And so all, I felt like I wanted to have equity um, in property. And also because I do live in LA and this place is in Studio City, you know, hopefully, God willing, um, the market continues going up, you know, because real estate prices here um, are, uh, are pretty high compared to the rest of the nation. Um, and so I bought this place end of November um, and it's already gone up uh, on the uh, Redfin. They have like a home value estimator, uh, also like a Zestimate from Zillow. Uh, it's already gone up $17,000 in the last month and a half. Uh, again, you know, estimated values, I don't know how much that really means because it's only worth that much if someone's willing to pay for it. Um, so I, I do feel like in the right markets, in the right situation, if you can, of course, real estate is a great investment if you can. Um, and then like I mentioned earlier, if you don't have the money to buy like an entire place by yourself, um, there's two great websites that I would recommend, Realty Mogul, 
R-E-A-L-T-Y Mogul, M-O-G-U-L, Realty Mogul and Fundrise. So if you go to those, you can read about them. Um, and they do have minimum investment amounts. I believe it's like 5,000 and then 10,000, which, you know, might, might be a lot for, for most people. Um, but at least, you know, read about them so you can save up um, to get there. And those are investment, real estate investment trusts. So instead of having to, you know, spend a ton of money to buy a office building, which on you know, to be honest, most people can't afford. You can actually buy into uh, this portfolio where you own like a tiny fragment, like a little portion of a lot of different um, office buildings, apartment complexes, uh, and so uh, the risk is really, really spread open, um, and it's managed here. Well, hold on. Let me go back to that. Let me just read about the three that I have investments in. So, okay, so Realty Mogul, like I mentioned earlier, um, I bought into that only last year. It's an 8% return. It was a guaranteed return um, in one of the, uh, the investment trusts. And so I printed out this picture, and there, I believe there's like 12 properties um, in the portfolio. But as you can see, we have an office building. Um, where are these? This is in Ohio, Pennsylvania, Texas. Uh, Colorado, California, Florida. So all these buildings, I own like a fraction, a tiny, tiny fraction of each of these uh, and, and a lot of other ones. Um, and it makes it, uh, I think, more accessible for most people to invest in real estate. Uh, there's a there's a history of, of distributions. So say you put in, I don't know, uh, you put if you put in $100, you're basically guaranteed to make $8 back. Um, so yeah, okay. All right, any other questions? Uh, yes, so someone's asking if I could clarify. So if you go to realtymogul.com, I know this is backwards, you guys, I'm sorry. Realty, R-E-A-L-T-Y, mogul. You can just read about that there because it's kind of, it will take me a very long time to explain everything. But yes, basically you're buying into an investment trust and this trust owns a lot of different properties and they're all different. So some of them specialize in apartment buildings, some of them specialize in, um, uh, like retail buildings, like this one that I own a, a, a little bit in, some shares in. Uh, they have like buildings rented out to Ross and medical buildings and a dentist's office and stuff like that. So uh, you can like, uh, the best thing to do, like I always say to everyone is you can, um, I can give you advice, you can read articles from different people, watch different videos, but the best thing to do is to just to go and try to research all this stuff for yourself because um, everyone's, you know, financial situation is different, you know, risk tolerance is different. Um, and I started out only doing very, very safe investments because I was scared to lose anything. Um, but I think with enough research and like, you know, just being very, very careful and kind of diversifying your, um, your investments, I wouldn't recommend obviously putting all of your savings into, you know, one company stock that probably is a, is a little risky. Um, so yeah. Okay. Let's see. Yes, definitely. Uh, Rob Ripa says diversify your portfolio throughout the sectors. Yes. So um, for me, yeah, I have uh, corporate real estate investments, apartment uh, apartment buildings. Um, let's see, different stocks, bonds, peer to peer lending. Um, yeah. Okay. All right. I feel like I've like talked um, a lot. So to end this, uh, let's see. Seven, the seven basic points. Um, to like re re recap everything that we talked about. So number one, try to sign up for an automatic savings program. So again, whatever you make, just set an automatic transfer, even if it's $5, whatever you can spare, a little bit every month, and then maybe not even notice that it's there, and then after a year, you might be surprised how much you have saved, you know? Or if you can do more than that, just automate it so you get used to that, right? Um, number two, try opt into your company for only k if you do work for a company that offers that, uh, or open a retirement account because, um, you know, we might feel like we're young, we were living in the moment and we're not thinking about it right now, but uh, especially if you're self-employed, especially if you're a musician uh, or artist, it's, uh, we, we really have to be the ones that, um, plan for our own futures. So, uh, you know, worry about your future self, set aside a little bit of money um, for when you're old and you're tired and maybe you don't want to like, you know, uh, play cello as much or whatever. So, okay, so do that. Um, number three, find any unnecessary expenses and eliminate them. Um, so, you know, I try to do this often. I, I go through all of my reoccurring payments so some of, some of us might have gym memberships or stuff like that and find anything that you really don't absolutely need if you can um, and eliminate them so I'm trying to think 
well yesterday I just canceled my spa membership to Burke Williams even though you know it's it was like $95 a month which for Burke Williams which is a very nice spa is not that much you know for a one hour massage but then I thought you know what I, there's like a Thai massage place down the street that's $35 an hour uh, early bird special if you go before 2 p.m. and yeah okay it's not as fancy and there's no jacuzzi or whatever but I'll survive so I canceled my uh, personally I canceled my Burke Williams uh, massage membership yesterday <laughs> and I'm proud of that um, so yes because that was not a necessary absolute necessary expense okay number four clean up any clutter that you have by selling unused assets so maybe you have something uh let's see it could be jewelry it could be a boat i don't know i've never had a boat rv anything music equipment that you're really not using which i do sometimes like i get excited i buy some gear and then it ends up just sitting there for a year and i've never even used it um so if you have extra stuff that's just taking up space um and you're not even using it you know maybe get rid of it sell it minimalism uh live with only the absolute necessary items that make you happy um, and that you really use uh, okay try to um, if something breaks try to repair it instead of replacing it so um, I think like with my boots my favorite pair of boots I probably have them for over a decade I know it's a long time uh, if you take them to like a, a cobbler they can just replace the heel if it gets damaged and then they're good to go okay uh, let's see number six develop a niche expertise in your profession that commands a higher wage okay so this is about of course savings is important but trying to increase your income is also uh, great and so if you have a regular job already but maybe you want to make more income you know start some side hustles there's so many different ways to do it um, I like like I mentioned before I was a Craigslist queen for a while so I did a lot of cello related things on Craigslist um, there's uber there's Lyft uh, there's task rabbit if you guys haven't heard about that I've actually um, uh, used a lot of services off task rabbit there's fiverr.com uh, there's a lot of like of these websites that lets you kind of like part-time offer your services whatever they might be digital uh, graphics or web design or waiting in line for someone if they don't want to stand in line at the Apple store all kinds of random stuff that people will be willing to pay for cleaning uh, cooking stuff like that so something that you can do on the side um, okay uh, and then number seven start learning about asset allocation and investment so basically just you know educate yourself uh, and learn uh, about different types of investments and savings and whatnot uh, and I think in the end it's just about caring you know if you if we really care about something we'll put in the effort and the time to learn about it to research it um, and that will lead to good results okay that's all I have um, it's been 56 minutes so let's make it an hour flat uh, let's see Robert says, live in a state with no state income tax. Yeah, so uh, Nevada is one of them. Um, uh, you know, sometimes it's not possible for everybody. I, for me, I, I feel like I have to be here in California because of what I, uh, because of what I do and all the recordings for like film, TV stuff. It's kind of based here in LA. Uh, but yeah, I guess if you live in a state with no state income tax, that is a huge benefit. Um, and also California, again, is very expensive to live in. Um, yes good good point um, and then let's see a quick other things oh today um, it was just announced <laughs> um, but I have a show in Los Angeles at the El Rey with my band May 3rd uh, I think sales tickets pre-sale begins uh, on Friday uh, and then also on Thursday this week so in a few days I'm flying to New York City for the weekend um, I'm going to be performing at the Round Glass Music Awards so it's a world music uh, show it's going to be in the ballroom of the Edison Hotel uh, so I'll be there and then on Saturday because I'll be in New York City I'll be doing uh, the Saturday live stream which is not on Saturday right now but this coming Saturday I'll be live streaming from um, the Colstein and Sons music shop in New York uh, and they are my partners uh, in the line of instruments that I have so it's called Tina Glow Strings and I have my own line of cellos of bows for violins violas and cellos um, and we're about to add a new line of pickups uh, so I'll be there in person I'll be showing you guys uh, the different products that we have and just live streaming from there so that's what's gonna happen this coming Saturday uh, thank you guys so much for joining me here I'm sorry that I didn't play any music today but I promise that that will be coming very soon um, I, I did promise somebody last live stream that I would be hi 
<laughs> Bramo's home from work. Um, I did promise somebody uh, last week that I was going to play Uguay Sends, the Kung Fu Panda main theme. And I'm so sorry, but I promise you, uh, not next Saturday because uh, I'll be in New York uh, live streaming from there. But the following Saturday, I will go back to playing music for you guys, okay? Um, thank you guys. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much for being here. Um, if you have any comments or you have suggestions for future live streams after this video ends, because I the actual live stream is not archived, so when the video ends, all of your comments disappear and I can't see them. So if you wait until the video is over and then go to the actual video that's archived in YouTube and then write in the comments there, let me know what you think, any comments you might have, any thoughts on the stuff that um, you know I rambled on for an hour uh, tonight about um, and any suggestions for future live streams, okay? All right, guys, thank you so much. Have a great evening. I hope something, one of these things that I talked about um, come is of use to you. I will also make a comment below and pin it to the top um, and just put in the links to all these websites that I talked about. So Lending Club for peer-to-peer -peer lending, um, Realty Mobile and Fundrise for the corporate uh, real estate investments. Um, oh, I didn't even talk about Mint.com. Mint is one of the best, it's free, one of the best online tools uh, that I've used, uh, I feel like all my life, but it, you kind of connect all of your bank accounts, your credit cards, your loans, um, everything that you have, and it gives you a very clear picture of where you are financially, um, just so you can see. And so mint.com is a great uh, tool. Uh, the apps that I mentioned, Acorns, the automatic investing, um, what was the other one? Uh, the budgeting app uh, where you can like, you know, look at your daily budget and how much it's costing you just to live off of your expenses um, and to really keep track of what you're spending. Um, and then uh, two or three different brokerages that I use for stock investments and bonds and whatnot, um, retirement account things. So I'll, I'll list all of that uh, below in a comment. Uh, so thank you guys so much for being here and I will talk to you soon. Okay, have a great night. Bye.